Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jonathan Schwartz. Good morning, everybody, and, uh, and welcome to uh, what I consider actually to be one of the most momentous changes uh, on the landscape, not only for Sun, but for the entire internet community. And, uh, and I'd not only like to welcome those of you in the room, I'd like to welcome you, those uh, on the web who are joining us this morning. This is a really fundamental change, uh, in my view, to not only the fate of Sun, but the fate of so many folks that are looking to the network as a source of value, as a source of opportunity, as a source of change, and ultimately a source of progress. Now, I think over the past uh, 10 years especially, but certainly over the past uh, few decades, uh, there's been an almost uh, constant discussion about something called a network effect. And the whole idea behind a network effect uh, for us really comes down to a very simple statement, which is the more people that are joining a community, the more people that are joining the network, the more valuable that network becomes. And we've seen that with fax machines. We've seen that with cell phones. We've certainly seen that with internet connectivity. And that's fundamentally an expression not only of the opportunity that all of us as uh, commercial entities see in the marketplace, it's also a reflection of the benefit that society gets out of having a network that connects everybody across the world. But fundamentally, at Sun, you know, we're here, we're a for-profit business, we're interested in creating new market opportunity for ourselves, for developers, and for partners. And, um, and I don't think it's, you know, been... Uh, 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 Certainly, it hasn't been uh, the most popular uh, business plan for the past at least five years for us to say the volume on the internet is ultimately good for our business. And yet, last quarter, we announced some pretty staggering changes. And fundamentally, what we announced was that the beginning of this business model was beginning to come true. It was beginning to evince itself as not only a source of technology opportunity, but it was beginning to evince itself as a source of financial opportunity. And when we talk about volume driving value, what we're talking about is more folks joining the network, more developers joining the community, more devices joining the network, more businesses joining the network. And some of these numbers on the left are staggering. And I'll give you a, a few examples in a moment, but six million plus Solaris licenses since uh, opening up Solaris to the community. Four billion devices over the past decade now running Java. And that's a number I want to come back and talk to you about. 5 million plus Java developers in all corners of the world, everywhere you can imagine, from high schools to the most advanced uh, high-performance computing facilities around the world. And the net result of all of these folks joining the network, of all these developers and technologists coming to contribute their devices and their services, for Sun has been <clears throat> a remarkable resurgence in our business. We've grown by double digits across each of the four businesses that we're in, the software business, the systems business, the storage business, and the services business. While, by the way, our gross margins, which are fundamentally the, the, uh, the best measure of how much value we deliver into the marketplace, while those gross margins have been expanding. And so the entirety of our business model is predicated upon this very simple network effect. As we bring more people into the community on the left, even if they're not using Sun's technology, and even if they're not paying Sun, as we bring more of them online, that drives a greater opportunity for Sun. It also happens to drive a greater opportunity for others in the marketplace. There's a rising tide, and it lifts all the boats that are floating on that ocean of opportunity. So in talking to the Wall Street Journal last week, I was trying to describe to them why, in my view, what we're announcing today is one of the most momentous, significant changes in the landscape of the Internet and will be seen five years from now as one of the most fundamental shifts in the ultimate destiny for where we're all headed. And I tried to put that in context, and the reporter I was talking to is clearly someone who looks at a PC all day long, and given the number of laptops I see in the marketplace, we're very much oriented that way in North America. But think about the following. The Java platform today outships the Solaris platform, the GNU Linux platform, Microsoft Windows, the Mac, Symbian, TiVo boxes, you name it, the Java platform outships them all combined. We're talking about billions and billions and billions of users 
billions of devices, billions of individuals. To the point where if you think about the freeing of the Java platform, bringing Java into the open source community, we're not just talking about giving folks a new technology or a new opportunity on the PCs they're touching today. We're talking about fundamentally changing the ultimate destiny of how people see the network across the world. Think about the following point. More people in the world will experience the internet on a mobile phone than on a PC. And in North America, that just doesn't make any sense to most of us, because we've all, we've had high-end PCs for so long. We're just accustomed to looking at the network through them. But more people in the world will experience the network through a Java-enabled phone than any other device in the world. And so the question for Sun is now that we're on, you know, nearly eight out of every ten phones that are shipped in the world, most of the desktops that are shipped in the world, most of the servers, most of the network services are built atop Java. The question for us is a fairly basic one. How do we get to the next four billion? How do we continue to create opportunity out in the marketplace? And that, to me, I think is a fundamental question because, again, we're doing this for a couple reasons. One, it will drive more community. And community is at the center of everything that we're doing. It's not okay to ship an esoteric piece of technology and hope to make money off of it. That's not our strategy. Our strategy is to drive the network effect, to drive the community, to drive volume in the marketplace so that we, along with our partners and, frankly, some of our competitors, can also go drive value in the marketplace. So to discuss how, in fact, we're going to go get to that next 4 billion devices, I'd like to introduce Rich Green, Executive Vice President of Software.